There is a new moon that is happening on August 6th and 7th, 2021 at 5.51 p.m. Pacific. So that will be on August 7th east of Turtle Island or North America. This new moon is a part of three successive lunations that we have already begun talking about in August. As always, if you want to do a deep dive, I collect relevant videos and put them into a playlist in the cards for your review. So if you would like more information about previous lunations that featured these transits, check out the cards after we are done this video. This new moon is strongly expressed in the elemental dignity of earth and air. The earth energy governs the physical, corporal, tangible reality. This includes the physical body, money, and anything of a physical structure in your life. The air elemental dignity governs the mind, thoughts and ideas, problem solving, and cognition. This new moon is happening in Virgo it is governed by Mercury, the planet of communication. And because of this, it is complementary to both the earth and the air dignities. The modality of this new moon is a mutable energy. The mutable energy has a high desire for change and transformation, which you will shortly see is a big feature of this new moon. As I have said, this new moon is happening in Virgo at 14 degrees, 38 minutes, and Virgo being the sign of the harvest and the last days of summer. This summer, we have had very special transits that have opened up new beginnings. In June and July, we had the North Node conjunction with the fixed star Aldebaran. This transit only happens once every 18 years. This transit allowed us to set a new course and direction in our lives. Do not be worried if you feel as though your life hasn't yet fully changed. Some of the changes that may have begun for many people are still implicit and growing under the surface of things. Be patient. In late spring, Jupiter entered into Pisces, a sign that it rules, and through its transit therein, opened up a world full of new possibilities that will re-emerge in December when it re-enters Pisces after its current retrograde period in Aquarius. We also had two full moons in Aquarius with one of those being at the 29th degree of culmination these transits allowed us to take an inventory of information that we have been gathering and come into full understanding or a deeper understanding of the significance of the information that we were made aware of. In short, the summer has had us take an inventory of our lives regroup after difficult transits in 2019 and 2020 and begin to look forward 
towards 2022. This moon is a part of this reorientation as we now harvest all the things that we know and look forward towards the full moon in Pisces that is happening on September 20th. It is my opinion that whenever in astrology you see such a nexus of synchronicity between several different astrological events, this points to a significance and heightened frequency of the current times. This means that these current times are definitive for your life and mine, and it is with conscious awareness that we are able to progress and move forward successfully. This new moon is strongly grounded in the energy of communication as well as love. I'll explain this now. The new moon is happening in the sign of Virgo that is ruled by the planet Mercury. Mercury is the planet of communication and it is in Libra at present time. Mercury in Libra opens up communication and lets it fly liberally. This can be for the better or the worse. However, I do believe that it's more optimistic. This means that through this new moon and towards the next full moon in Pisces, there's a strong emphasis encouraging us to communicate about what we have been perceiving through these summer months. I'll explain more in a minute. As I have mentioned in previous videos, each sign is divided into three parts called decans that span 10 degrees each. This new moon is happening in the second decan, which is ruled by Venus in traditional astrology and Saturn in modern astrology. Both Venus and Saturn are in domicile, which means that they are in the sign that they rule and therefore bring powerful energies to this new moon. Saturn as the modern ruler of the second decan of Virgo encourages organization and a desire to process the things we must do. This may happen for you personally in that you will want to complete tasks and finish up things that are outstanding. You may want to reorganize your workflow at this time, reorganize your office, or any other mix of changes that change the structure of how you communicate. Or these pressures may come on to you now from the outside in which there is some small restructuring at your workplace or new rules are implemented. Usually these are for the best as they address certain things that may have been disordered in the past or that can work better. We'll touch on Saturn more in a minute. Venus is the traditional ruler of the second decan. As I have already mentioned, she is in the sign of Libra at 25 degrees. Beyond this, Venus is the chart ruler. As Mercury is in the sign of Libra that is governed by Venus. This means at the end of the day, the answer to everything you are addressing now is through love and compassion. So when in doubt, 
It is your love and compassion that will resolve problems and help you move ahead. Beyond this, Venus is conjunct two asteroids that I think are quite inspiring. First, she is with the asteroid Apollo that really ignites her beauty and allows beauty in your life to shine. This means that compassion will be found easily at this time. Whether it's compassion you find in your heart for others or others find in their heart for you. It's a best bet to approach others with open hands and an open heart. You will find success by doing this more than being defensive. The second asteroid that is with Venus at this time is Sisyphus. Now I won't get into the story here, but essentially Sisyphus is an asteroid that governs arduous and repetitive tasks that may feel as though they come with no end indefinitely. I feel this conjunction may find you discouraged at times, but rather than causing the discouragement, address any feelings of being tired, your love may be experiencing from all the trials and tribulations of trying to show love to others in the past. I feel this is a reset point for Venus in which she will reignite again, which will open up your heart and the hearts of others to be more motivated and open to love again. There are several aspects on Venus that are poignant now and help with this energy. First, Mars and Venus are forming a semi-sextile, which is an energetic, helpful energy. This is just another energy that will help you boost the vitality of love in your life. So in situations where you may be feeling tired or worn down in love, there may be a new beginning at this time. The other very favorable transit on Venus right now is the trine between Venus and Jupiter. This trine brings hope into your life as well as faded positive experiences or unexpected events and little miracles of love. Overall, this is a beautiful energy and a very hopeful energy for this new moon. Remember, the bottom line of this new moon is love and compassion. Now I'm going to highlight an aspect on Venus that may be hard to hear, so you may want to jump ahead two minutes now. Venus is forming a square to Pluto in the sign of Capricorn. This brings up power issue imbalances, such as things that are lacking in compassion, pressing down on us and limiting our freedom to express our love. For many of us, this is one or two things that are repetitive patterns. A friend who won't listen, someone who doesn't call you back, or someone who you consistently experience a power struggle with. Juxtaposed to the positive transit of Mars and Jupiter, I feel this transit is in some way helping you recognize the good from the bad. Of course, choose the good at this time. And don't worry about the intimidation that you may be experiencing from those factors which are stressing these power imbalances between you and them in your life. There will always be greater and lesser persons than yourself. So do not be bothered with comparison. But the square to 
Pluto runs a bit deeper because Mars and Pluto are forming a trine at this time. This is a bit of a shadow of an earlier transit in late August between Mars and Uranus. Uranus is currently forming a trine to the moon at 14 degrees of Virgo. This is an eerie synchronicity, although not the main energy of the new moon, it's important to acknowledge. Unfortunately, we saw the events transpire in Afghanistan and unravel very quickly. I feel that those aspects created a hostile atmosphere that intensified this series of very sad events. By no means am I saying that this will be an acceleration of further violence. I don't believe that astrology is well suited for doom and gloom forecasting. However, it reminds us that astrology is objective and fuels frequencies to good and bad energies in our lives. Such things as power, force, and energy may be applied in positive ways such as achieving goals and dreams, building beautiful things, and many of the other wonderful things we do in love, but it can also feed the shadows of destruction, harm, and pain. And I'm actually a realist who believes it's important to be mindful of the suffering of others and bring into consciousness compassion for their fate and not walking ignorantly away from people suffering. This by no means is a political statement. It's just my thoughts on the situation and situations like it. If you're not familiar with my story, I grew up in Warsaw, definitely a long time after a big war, but the consciousness of what happened in Poland has shaped who I am as a person and it encourages me always to think about those who suffer the most. The geometry of this chart is that of a locomotive. The moon is the planet that leads this geometry of the transits. This means that many of our understandings of what is happening around us are motivated by the subconscious and it would be very helpful for you to take some time to acknowledge what it says. Mercury is the ruler of Virgo, which we've already said, and it's very important because of this to this new moon. Mercury in Libra opens up communication. It helps information to flow easily with an air of optimism, releasing complications or hang-ups about what is being said. It's a very hopeful communication style. This means that at this time, if you have things to share with others or want to talk about things you've kept inside, this is a wonderful time to have these conversations, especially in light of the Mercury retrograde period in Libra that will begin on September 27th. This transit will help you consolidate anything that you begin now. So let's say you have a difficult conversation you want to have with someone. You may try to ask 
to have this conversation at this time or maybe a conversation to break new ground. And no matter how it goes, the Mercury retrograde will help you resolve the consequences of whatever is said. So if you're shy to say something or intimidated, the retrograde period is a reassurance for you about what you want to talk about. There are also two beautiful transits on Mercury at this time. The first is a trine to the north node and a sextile to the south node. This touches upon a lot of the energies from the summer that were activated. We've talked about this before. Essentially, with a sextile to the south node, there's an opportunity to communicate and break ground on things concerning the past, especially things that may be bottled up or addressing secrets or any other blockages that are holding you back. Think of this as communication about past events, this life or the last, that allows you to free yourself from those bonds and move forward to whatever's next. There's also a trine to the North Node in Gemini. This is coming in continuum to the South Node sextile. And essentially it's like a slingshot, allowing you to address the past, release, that's the South Node, and push forward towards what you want, what your ambition is. If you want more information on this, I'll include my video on the transit of the North Node with Aldebaran because this is a huge part of this frequency. The South Node is also with a asteroid called Nemesis. Nemesis is a goddess of consequences, which means that if someone had done misdeeds in the past, Nemesis would control their ability to move forward and bring in consequences. Likewise, she limited hope and opportunities for those who had too much. Now, if we're considering the South Node with Nemesis, it's very likely that this energy is one of emancipation of any consequences that you're living with from this life or last. So if you feel as though your past is haunting you and past deeds or misdeeds or possibly something from a past life is continuing to bring you down, this energy, the South Node with Nemesis, Sextile, Mercury, and then that trining the North Node, really gives you an opportunity to free yourself of that. You may want to try some type of ritual, or if this involves another person trying to resolve the issue with that person or making peace with them. But if you feel haunted by your past, this energy is one of the prettier astrological alignments for the emancipation of evil in your life. Likewise, for those of you who feel cursed, you may have great success addressing any dark energy that is upon you. Now, I always hesitate to talk about curses because, of course, there are a lot of charlatans trying to sell potions and lots of other things. So please be sure that the solutions that you're seeking are of a positive nature and don't allow this to gaslight you to putting yourself into compromising situations. At the end of the day, work around curses, bad juju, negative energies is most often best addressed alone and outside of extreme circumstances 
you will be best to address these issues privately using your own intuition and instincts about what is best for you. You may also ask for help from someone you trust or have an open conversation with a good friend about what is happening. Maybe this will help resolve your issues. The trine and the sextile from Mercury to the nodes is a part of a larger transit I discussed in previous videos. The full moon in Aquarius video for August 22nd will be linked in the cards. In it, I described a configuration called a kite off of the air energy of Aquarius, Libra, and Gemini with the tail in Sagittarius alongside the south node. This is the huge energy of emancipation that has already begun with the full moon on August 22nd. When Venus formed a similar position to where Mercury is now for the new moon in Virgo, but when Venus was in aspect, you probably had some level of emotional awareness of what needs to change. And because now for the new moon in Virgo, Mercury is in the same position, you will want to talk about it. Again, this is a very optimistic and positive energy you should be excited about. As I said in that video also, there is a further third transit on September 20th, which happens to be the next full moon in the sign of Pisces. During that full moon, Mars, the planet of action, is going to be in aspect to Saturn and the nodes forming the third successive kite in a row. This is a powerful symmetry signaling that the frequency is incredibly strong around us now as one astrological event flows into the next. If you want a deep dive on that, go into the cards where I'll leave the videos describing the kite formation in detail. The kite connects to the star Aldebaran and the two full moons and the new moon in Virgo on September 6th and 7th. We'll talk about this more at the end of September, but when Mars is in aspect to that kite, you will be ready to take action on everything you've been talking about and feeling for the last month. Because we're talking about this more sequentially, I'd like to point out that these positions are in opposition to Chiron in Aries. Chiron in Aries is working on all of our identity issues, especially things to do with how we feel about ourselves and who we are in the world. These oppositions challenge us to rise up from the suppressive elements of conditioning narratives we have gone through. That means the events in our lives, what we've been told we are, well, we, we have been placed to be how we've been put on the totem pole by our communities, at what position on the totem pole we are. Because the outer planets are retrograde and these inner planets are direct, we are in a big cycle of emancipation of our individual identities and I encourage you to take this opportunity to free yourself. So if you don't like what you are, this is your time to change that. And it's nobody's business but yours. With this new moon, don't get ahead of yourself. As it's Mercury that is an aspect, you may want to talk to close friends or people who you trust or a friendly astrologer about where you want to see these changes. Take in all the information 
that the world mirrors back to you and start to make your decisions for when Mars will be in aspect on September 20th with the full moon in Pisces. I really love this symmetry. There's one more aspect that I really want to mention for this new moon. It's not in relation to the rulers, but it is a direct aspect on the sun and moon. And that is a trine to Uranus in Taurus. Now I've talked about some of the more nefarious or shadowy aspects of Uranus in aspect to the moon and Mars. But Uranus here is in the sign of Venus, Taurus. And it is likely to bring unexpected love and compassion as well. Further to this, Uranus is with the fixed star Menkar, which governs the unconscious. This is when you blurt something out that you didn't expect to say, reveal your true intentions, expose your love for somebody. Through this time, it is possible that great breakthroughs will happen unexpectedly, as the unconscious can't keep a secret and its reactions and communications will help you break new ground. If you're shy like me, then that can be incredibly nerve wracking. But trust and have hope that this transit will bring a lot of unexpected good into your life. One of the main themes of this new moon that I wanted to put forward was that astrology is objective and works for good and bad. So as we've seen with our observations on Afghanistan, those aspects were extremely unfortunate. But this transit in itself is also very life affirming and beautiful and brings miracles into the lives of others and ourselves. Let's all hope for peace in the world and in our relationships. Look forward to a bright future because it is coming. We've collectively had a lot of downloads in the last two years. And if anything, let's hope that they woke up people to questioning and understanding the world around them with a desire to make it a better world. 